Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and in this video I'll be showing you how to get your Nolo VR controllers all connected up to your base station, and I'm going to be showing you a quick overview on how to get things set up in Steam VR and get everything calibrated. If this is your first time joining me, thanks for stopping by, and if you're interested in DIY VR, be sure to click that subscribe button now so you don't miss anything. The first thing you're going to want to do is install the Nolo driver for Windows. At the time of filming this, this was only available on the GitHub, but it will most likely be on the Nolo VR website once you guys get your kits. So I did put a link for that in the description below, and if it does change, I will be sure to update the link. Now this is already installed on my computer, but the installation is really simple, so you don't need to watch me run through it. There is also a testing or debugging tool available, but this is completely optional and you really don't need it to get everything running. Now if the driver didn't start up right away once you installed it, just double click on this icon and then you'll see it pop up in your system tray. Now one thing I did that I'm not sure if it was necessary or not, is that I plugged everything into my computer at the start. Now this may or may not be necessary, but I did see some stuff auto install so you may as well do that at this point now. You can use that octopus cable to plug the three into your computer and you should see things pop up. Once that's done, you can just go ahead and unplug everything. Now that the software side's all done, now we have to get the hardware synced up. When you get your kit, everything's going to have a little bit of a charge to it so you can just get things set up right away straight out of the box. The first thing you're going to have to do is get your base station powered on. Just press and hold the button at the top till you hear it turn on. You'll also see some lights come on as well. Now if you listen to it, it does have a very distinct hum to it. Next thing we'll need to do is get the controllers powered on. Just press the system button until you hear it turn on. You'll also notice that the little LED on there is red. This means it's not connected. Next, you'll need to attach the head marker to your headset using the provided clip. Just snap that in, and then you can plug in your cable. And you'll see the same thing up top here. The light will be red. Now one quick note while I have this here is what I did is I took the tether cable that came with it and I ran it through the top head strap and then I ran it behind the headset here and then just velcroed it to the back. And this way the cable will be coming out from behind you just like it would on the HTC Vive or on the Rift. Now if you are using a cardboard headset you can use this second cable here to tether your phone. Otherwise if you're using a Gear VR like this I just take the cable and I tuck it underneath the little clip here and that way it stays completely out of the way. Now here comes the quirky part, getting everything synced. First thing you do with the base station running, you're going to want to press the button on the back and hold it until you hear it stop running and the lights go out. Then you'll see that the light on the top is just going to flash green now. This means it's ready to pair. Now you'll take your controllers and there's a little tiny button on the side where you can stick your fingernail. That's your sync button. Press and hold that sync button until you hear the controller vibrate. And now, you'll see that it's still red, but at least you know it's been done because of the vibration. Second controller, do the exact same thing. That's done. Now for the headset part, all you do is you just press and hold this button. Now you won't get any kind of vibration, but it will just blink once. And there. And that's all. Now, take your base station again, and just press the button on the back once. Your base station will fire right back up, and now your controllers should be connected. If you look down at the controllers, you should see them both green, like that. And your headset marker should now be green as well. And that's all you have to do to get everything running. Now there's one other small quirk to how this all works, is that when you hit the button on the back of the base station, it basically wipes the entire memory. So for example, if you do connect both controllers just fine, but you forget to do your headset controller, if you try to restart the base station into a pairing mode again, make sure you do your controllers again or else you're not going to have the controllers connected on the second time. But once you do have everything paired up once, you shouldn't ever need to do it again. Now that the hardware is all synced up and ready to go, let's go look at the software side. Now that everything is synced up, you should be able to take a look in this Nolo driver tool and you'll see that everything is all connected. Cool part too is it'll show you how much battery power is in each one of these. If something is not connected, you'll see over here on the left side that it'll have a red X. It's pretty obvious when you see it. If that happens, just reconnect everything to your base station again. Now below all of these, you're going to see RiftCat here. Now this is where you're going to select if it's Gear VR or Cardboard. So it's pretty simple, just pick the one that you're actually using. For me, I'm using Gear VR, I'll leave it set there. 
Beyond that, there's really nothing else here that you need to worry about for the initial setup. You can select language. Right now there's a choice between Chinese and English. This will bring you to the help center and you can also do a firmware upgrade down the road. Next thing you need to do, get RiffCAD opened up. Just open this up and have everything running the normal way you would. Now the only setting that you need to worry about with NOLO in here is this tracking options. There's a bit of a trick here. If you're using Gear VR, make sure it's set to phone orientation and free track position. If you're using a cardboard style, you'll need to make sure you use free track orientation and position only. Now this is a good thing. This means no longer having to worry about any kind of drift your phone might have from a lousy gyroscope. Since I'm using Gear VR, I'm just going to leave it at phone orientation and free track position. You'll know pretty quickly if you selected the wrong one because you'll get no tracking at all. All we need to do now is start up Steam VR and everything should be working. So let's jump into Steam VR now and see how we get everything set up in there. Alright, first thing you'll notice when you get in here is that your controllers might seem to be a little bit wonky or in really weird spots. All you need to do to straighten that out is you press your normal system button and you just double tap it. As soon as you do that, it swaps your controllers and just straightens them right out in front of you. That's all you need to do to get them calibrated, it's pretty simple. Now if you see yourself way off the middle of the room or if you're way too low to the ground like I am or if you're way too high or something like that, no big deal, you still need to do the room setup. Now taking a look at the controller tracking, looking at them on the screen, it is precise. Like we're talking really close to actual Vive territory here. This is fantastic for tracking. Now I'm going to skip doing the room setup in this video, but if you do want to see it, check the card in the top right of your screen. I've got my full setup guide on how to do it with the PS Move controllers, but it's the exact same way to do it, but with NOLA VR. Now the last thing I'm going to show you in here is the 180 degree spin feature. Now this is super cool because remember, this is not 360 degrees tracking. All you need to do is double click on the application button here, and that'll just spin you 180 degrees. So if you look behind you, that's where the arrow is back there. And just do it one more time, brings you right in front of you. So this will really help to kind of act as like a 360 degree setup. As far as the controllers too, the touch pads are touch sensitive and as you can see right on the headset there, is that this spins right around just like you'd expect it. I'm not clicking it yet either. So that's fantastic. And the trigger too, you can see that moving too. So the models are, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna seem like you have it's going to seem like you have the Vive controllers in your hand now. Now that being said, let's just take a quick peek on how much range we can actually get with this. So I'm going to open up the menu here, and I'm just going to turn around with my controllers in front of me. We'll see how far I can turn before I lose tracking. There they go right there. And then I'm going to come back around the other way. And there they go there. So I've got just on the other side of that line there where they start going away. I mean that's really close. I mean it's not 360 but you get quite a bit. And I'm going to put my base station up a little bit higher and hopefully that's going to give me a little bit more range as well. Well that's it. Now that everything's set up and ready to go, all you need to do for now on is just make sure you have the NOLO driver running before you start up Steam VR. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and don't be afraid to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.